I'm Fred Kennedy. And I'm Nick Marinkovich. We are the creators of Dead Romance. And you're listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book and graphic novel creators and supporters. I'm John Swinimer. On this episode, I chat with Fred Kennedy and Nick Marinkovich about Dead Romans and more in advance of Toronto Comic Con 2024. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel. Toronto Comic Con has a spectacular three-day sci-fi, horror, anime, gaming, and comic book event in Canada that attracts thousands of people to come to the Metro Toronto Convention Centre. Based in Toronto, Ontario, Fred Kennedy has a varied career as a radio host, TV personality, and a comic book writer. He cites one of his memorable career milestones to date as interviewing Weird Al Yankovic. Fred's previous writing credits include the anthology series True Patriot Presents and The Fourth Planet. His latest project, Dead Romans, is illustrated by Nick Marinkovich, lettered by Andrew Thomas, and edited by Alison O'Toole. Also based in Toronto, Ontario, Nick Marinkovich is an illustrator, graphic novelist, and multimedia artist. He's worked for IDW, Devil's Do, and Marvel, as well as releasing his own titles under Image and Pop Sandbox. He's known for a signature ink-rendered, photo-based artwork that is heavily stylized. And as mentioned before, Nick's most recent work is Dead Romans, co-created by Fred Kennedy for Image Comics. So without further ado, here's my chat with Fred Kennedy and Nick Marinkovich about Dead Romans and more in advance of Toronto Comic Con 2024. So Fred Kennedy and Nick Marinkovich, thank you very much for taking time to chat with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I appreciate your time. I know you're both very busy gentlemen getting ready for the big Toronto Comic Con. Before we get to all the questions, I'd like to know, what are you reading today? And maybe, Fred, I can ask you first. Um, Well, I'm reading uh, these books that are in French called Valois. And there's three of them. And they're by this, I I think he's French, but Jose, our colorist on Dead Romans, insists that he's Spanish. He's Spanish, Uh, man. Jamie Calderon is Spanish? Oh, no, I thought you meant Jose. No, Jose is Spanish. Yeah. But Jamie Calderon, like, I thought he was French. So it's, It sounds like a French name, but... I know. think so, but I defer to Jose on all these cool guy matters. So I think it's cool, <laughs> and it, like, has to do with, like, the French monarchy. And if you read those books, uh, The Iron Throne, which is one of the biggest, like, inspirations for Game of Thrones, then... You, you, you're, you're familiar with that era of the French royal politics, the destruction of the Knights Templar and, uh, the wars with England and all of those things. Uh, the Accursed King series, I think is what it translates directly into French. But yeah, uh, Valois is what I'm reading right now. Cool. Well, I didn't want to set off controversy right off the bat, but, uh, appreciate that. How about Nick? <laughs> yeah. what, what, what are you reading today, Nick? Um, well, Actually, just today, I had started the audiobook, <laughs> which is how most of my reading is done these days, um, for uh, Dan Simmons' The Terror. I really, really dug the series that came out. Uh, it was like two, three years ago now, the AMC series. It was just so well done, and I revisited it, and then, you know, just uh, redditing some background info on the story. You know, apparently, like, the, the book goes into lots more a lot, lot, lot more detail. Are you guys familiar with the story at all? About the ship and everybody went about the crazy uh, yeah. from lead poisoning or something? Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah. one. Yeah, that um, was something else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wild story. Um, anyway, so that's my audio booking while I draw these days. Nice. And um, I also, that's- I just started uh, Daniel Klaus's uh, Monica, but honestly, I, I'm like just um, like 50 pages in. So, I mean, it's a, it's a big read and uh, yeah. i'm not that far into it well, you know glad you have time to read some <laughs> i got another historical book that i'm reading like outside of comics by this dude Zel- zeljko zadarich and it's about nicholas rinsky and the siege Sigetvar in 1566 and it's dude it's one of the most balling stories i've ever read in my <laughs> life like it's just, and it's real and it's like two thousand dudes that are holding this castle as 
Solomon invade Solomon the Magnificent, and he's on his way to Vienna, and he knows he can't have this one guy at his back because he's he's a very good commander, and he has a very good understanding of how to use his resources. And this guy, Nicholas Rinsky, fought at the Siege of Vienna in like the 1520s, the first time uh, Solomon tried to take it. And he fought there as like a 19-year-old kid, and now he's commanding this castle, and it's like this. They refuse to surrender. They will fight to the last man, even though they're outnumbered literally 35, 40 to 1. It's wild. No, even more than that, because there's only 2,000 of them, and there's over 130,000 Ottomans in their army. It's in- When you read it, it's insane. And then you're like, oh, it's real, too. That's wild. <laughs> That's even more real. There you yeah. go. Mr. Well, Kennedy, you butchered that author's <laughs> name. <laughs> I did. And I've talked to you about this, but it's like uh, he's Croatian, and there's a lot of Serbian characters in the story. So we can talk about that this weekend. Because remember, the J is a Y in his name, right? Well, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Zeliko. 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 Did I get that right? Eh, close enough. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's all Greek to me. So. <laughs> Come by our table. You can get this all week. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're talking here today because you're both going to be tabling at Toronto Comic Con. So with that in mind, I'd like to know what is it you like most about conventions? And maybe Nick, I'll ask you first this time. Um, you know, I, I actually, I hadn't done the convention circuit in a while and with dead Romans, you know, Fred ushered me back into it. And, um, I gotta say, like, I had a really good time last year doing, um, the Toronto, the the fan expo and we hit New York as well as San Diego. Um, good company with Mr. Kennedy. That's a, a big part of it. Huge part of it. You know, um, if you have good company, anything works. Um, and, um, you know, the fans were really responsive and really enthusiastic, which, you know, you never know when you have a new series, how it's going to be, how it's going to be received. Um, but I mean, we, I couldn't complain at all. Like it was just, it was, it was really elevating to see all that. And, um, the, the kind of turnout we had. How about you, Fred? What do you like about conventions most? Uh, I like this, uh, you know, being a grown up, uh, doing the grown up thing and your life takes up so much time. You realize like when you were doing this in like your twenties and stuff, these were all of your friends, you know, and it's all the other creators that you're friends with those who stick around, you know, and, and what ends up happening is it's sort of like this becomes your weekend getaway with your friends, only you're working. But it's like we're all do almost everybody I know that's in comics is doing it is like it's one of other things that they are doing. And so this is just a good time to like go out, hang out, see your friends, talk to people about stories and storytelling and all those things. And at the same time, like meet people that are supporting the books and stuff you create. And I think that there's a few times I've done shows where I've gone in with these expectations of things that I needed to have happen while I was there. And that still happens now. I guess to an extent, but it's very much less focused on, I got to sell all these books. I got to sell all these books. It's more over like go and grow as a creator and meet people and sell some books. You know what I mean? The books is there, but the main thing on the plate is just to see people and foster those relationships and, and talk to people and see what everyone's doing. And then everyone sort of like shares things that they've been working on and you grow as a creator because of their growth. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, that, that's a good way to put it. And and I, I know for myself, when when I was younger, you know, you almost see uh, other creators as, as rivals more. And but at this stage in your life, you know, anyone who's been doing it as long as you, you have an automatic respect for them. And not me. Uh, I hate everyone. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, but it's true. You know, you I, I feel like I get along better with people now than I ever have before. Yeah, you know? that's true. It, it just because, you know, you start to appreciate other people's work. Um, and it's all, you realize we're kind of all in this together, you know, it's, it's yeah. that type of, it's that type of field, you know, that we all work in. Sure. Sure. Now, given that you've both been to many conventions and festivals, can you point to one experience that stands out from all the others? Just one. You go first, Nick. 
Oh, man. At the convention or during the convention? Well, whatever you like. Um, Something that uh, I've heard people have great experiences off the show floor. Yeah. Oh. If, if Fred has one ready, because that's, a, yeah, that's a, a bit of a, a San question. Diego last summer. I think San Diego last summer. And, and, I, and I have to lean on that because uh, I've been grinding away doing indie books and small press books for so long. And then to have a book with image, shadow line and image coming out. And Jim Valentino had done so much work to support us so much uh, and, and set a lot of things up for us when we were there and to be there with Allison as well. Cause I really believe, and, and I've, I've said this many times that this book would not be what it was if not for Allison O'Toole. And I encourage any creator to like try and work with her. And this is the thing about working with a, a great editor is that you're not going to like, like everything that they tell you. And that's just part of the process. Cause because her job is to make sure that it's the best and you need to trust her and you need to trust your co-creators. And there's things that she's said that I did not agree with at first. And she's, she's such a great manager of creative people because she was like, she had this, like, let's just see, let's just see. Cause then we'll see if it sings, it sings. And if it doesn't, we'll try something else. And then every time she's right, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so to go to San Diego and have all of us there, and then to get to sit at the image table and do and sign books. And I remember like some kid, he had brought he had bought specific variants and brought them all to the table to get them signed. And he was from like Idaho or something like that and was coming to the show. And we were on his list. Like he had the classic like list of things he needed to do. <laughs> yeah. And we're on this kid's list. And it was a really rad feeling. And then getting to hang out with all these people that you have like a profound like admiration for as creators and then like jimmy palmiotti being like oh man i love this book <laughs> to me that was one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me on the show floor because <laughs> i am a huge jimmy palmiotti fan and when sure. he came up and said that it was like it was super rad and everyone at image was so nice to us and i remember do you remember that one dude with the beard and from portland nick he goes yeah you guys man you guys have just had this vibe all weekend man <laughs> and it was like it was such a good we were having the best time, yeah. and I think that everybody really read that. We, we just felt like cause there's so many people that get jaded and all this stuff about these books, but for me, I was very much like, like I'm having the best time. I'm having the best time of my life, and is everything going exactly the way I want? No, but I am not going to let any of that dull my shine, man. I'm having a great friggin' weekend, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, on that, it was it was same for me. Um, you know, I, I don't have any one specific event, but I the last the con, the cons we did last year specifically send you in New York. I, I mean, aside from Toronto, which went swimmingly, um, it was just such a good vibe. Um, every everyone, it felt like everyone we met just we got along with amazingly. Um, we got to meet creators that we've been fans of. I, I did anyway for a long time. And that one dude, the artist guy, the book that you bought with the really cool tissue paper inside or whatever it was. Oh, Ken Williams. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. lost your, I thought that was <laughs> yeah. for sure what you were going to say. Cause you met him with Jose. I, and I, Nick is a happy guy, but I've never seen him this excitable before. Wow. And so <laughs> when he met him, like, and he got his book and he was like, he was like trying to justify. It was kind of expensive, but it was really good. And I'm like, you don't have to justify this to me. Like you're like having the greatest moment of your life. Absolutely, get the book. Yeah, it was a, it was a great time, man. We had a really good time. But San Diego was was a was a blast. Super. You know, I mean, e even just hanging out with like Carrie. Uh, yeah, Adam, we know, were with because, Carrie um, Nord most of the weekend. He was you know, awesome. um, we all stayed together, and you know, we just got along like we knew each other for ages. And we just met, you know, I, I mean, Carrie apart. Nord had so many stories. Like he yeah. had so many stories to tell us. It was awesome. <laughs> and Adam Gorham was with as well. And I, I love Adam Gorham to yeah. death, like ride or die for the gore hammer uh, <laughs> and having like the four of us in that room and then hanging out with Steph Girk. Like, yeah, th that was a su such a blast, just mm -hmm. an absolute blast. Man, lots of good times. There you go. So we're talking about Toronto Comic Con, and you will both be tabling. So can you tell me what will be on your table when attendees come by to see you? Well, oh, Dead Romans. Uh, yeah, the 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 big thing is we have the uh, Dead Romans hardcover out now, which will be sprawled for all to see. The large format hardcover, which is, for anyone who hasn't seen it, a beautiful job. Um, 
big up, big props to Jim Valentino for putting that together. Um, and it, it really just showcases the entire first arc of the series. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, it just, it's gorgeous. And, um, and you know, everyone may get a sneak peek of what we're doing now for arc two. Mm, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I actually have arc, the, the second arc, I'm, I'm halfway done the scripting. Uh, like the final draft. So, uh, seven, eight, nine are all like finished. They're, they're, they're in the book. And I think that issue nine in particular of dead Romans is, and Allison agreed with this, that it's the strongest thing that I've ever written. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. and That's I, cool. I'm really excited. And we, we get into some really cool character building arcs in it, but we do it in a really epic fashion. We're trying to create the world that these people are looking at from the eyes that existed like over 2000 years ago, where the woods were still magic and unexplainable. And where does the sun go when the night is over? Like all these things that people don't understand, like the power of magic and majesty of the world is, is all very prevalent. And and it's even, you know, it's, it's heightened because of the, the life and death realities that these people live, you know? Yeah. So fans of Dead Romans should definitely check out your tables. That's for sure. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're both professionals in the comic book field, and I know that people are going to come by your table, and they're going to be saying, "Gee whiz, I want to make my own book." What would be one piece of advice that you give to someone who's making their own book? Maybe Fred, I'll ask you first. Oh, uh, oh, Nick, you should go first. <laughs> okay, Nick. Okay, Nick, you go first. <laughs> uh, one piece of advice. Um, that's, a, that's again a loaded question. Um, Fine, I'll first, go. First, first, yes, first thing, want. first thing. Honestly, um, if you're not doing it yourself, you're working with a partner. Find someone you really get along with, um, because it can go so awry so quickly. And believe me, I've experienced that. Like, and I'm giving Fred huge uh, compliment right now because I just think you know this project just went everything went right with this project. You know. So a that's that's a big step a, um, and after that, you know, using outlets like I mean, with co- companies like Image, which is such a huge um, outlet for creators, may you got to make your own book. Don't. That's what I would do. Don't solicit uh, other companies if you're just looking to be um, uh, an in-house artist or something. Make your own book to, if you really want to shine and get noticed. Although the question was, how do you make your own book, right? No, it was one piece of advice, but that that's good good stuff for sure. I think people should actually do that. <laughs> to have a sample, I think that's what you're saying, Nick, to have your own thing that you can show off to people and say, look, I've done it myself. Exactly. You know, uh, show people that you can produce a product, bottom line, you know, and the first time you do it, you're going to think it's amazing. And then people are going to tell you it's not. And just keep building on it. Don't don't just stop there. It's always it, keep it dynamic. It's all you're always growing as an artist or, and a writer. And just you know, if if you really want to, is this, this something you really want to do? Then put the work in. Bottom line, put the work in. Sure. How about you, Fred? You thought of something? Uh, same thing. You got to make your own thing. And the exact same thing about finding someone you can work with and be honest about the because as. I come at it from a writer's perspective. You want someone to draw your story. So if you're going in with that mentality, you need to pay. A smarter way is to go in with a story, concept, an idea. And since and be honest about it, you don't have the money to pay this person everything. And you only do this with someone who's on your level. Like if they're starting, you do this. You don't go up to like, I don't know, like Michael Del Mundo and be like, listen, I got a cool idea, but <laughs> yeah, I can't pay yeah. you. You know, you don't do this. You yeah. could, you know what, honestly, I would love it if I was at a con next to him and somebody <laughs> did that. I think it would be amazing. Sure. But don't do that. No. Find somebody who is also just starting out and they're also trying to cut their teeth and then work on it together and be like, listen, I'm going to pay you what I can pay you, but I can't pay you as much as you're worth. But I want to make sure that I'm making this as easy for you as the artist as possible, that we're putting things in that you're interested in drawing and that we can craft something together that's ours. And we'll, you know, I'll take less on the back end than you'll get, you know, fine. You just got to be honest because 
once money becomes a grudgery thing, then it all falls apart. It all just catastrophically, laughably falls apart, man. That's what happened. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and um, you know, on what Fred said about finding someone at your level, you know, uh, just uh, uh, speaking practically, it's not an ego thing. It's a, it's a practicality thing. W anyone who's been doing this for a while, we, we all have our own, our own network of people that we work with already. So someone out of the blue, who's just starting coming to you, like what, be, re be honest. Like, why would I, why would I, you know, invest a huge amount of time as an artist to do your story when I have uh, a dozen guys who I've already worked with and I know what they do and I, and you know, I know that they can deliver working with me, you know, it, that's, that's the honest, like practicality of it all. Sure. Good stuff. You know? Well, thank you both for that. That's for sure. So with all the projects you have on the go, I'm wondering where people can find you online to find out about what you're doing down the road. So Fred, where should people go to find out about you? I'm on Twitter and blue sky and Instagram and all that nonsense. Um, at fearless underscore Fred, uh, is usually the best way to find me. I'm pretty active on Twitter. And when I say active on Twitter, that doesn't mean I'm posting all the time, but you know, I repost If I see friends that are posting work. I'll always make sure to give them some props. Like if somebody's doing a Kickstarter, I'll always make sure to, give it a good mention or two because uh, that's what you got to do. It's like a community thing. You, you big up your friends and there's sometimes what's interesting is sometimes like the reality is sometimes you have like little personality conflicts with people. Don't fly those flags and be all negative about things. Cause I'll be honest with you. There's people that you just have a personality clash. And I remember I can think of a few people specifically that I didn't really get along with that I, I sort of ran in a circle or adjacent circles with them. And I just kept that negativity to myself. And now here it is years later. And they are people that I interact with the most, <laughs> some of the most, Sorry. like I interact with them a lot. And I realized like, you're just young dudes being stupid. And now you're older and don't care about that stuff. So. Yep. Okay. Really How about out there? I'm sorry about that. No, that's okay. How about Nick? <laughs> Nick, where can people find you online? I predominantly it's Instagram and Facebook, Nick dot Um, same avatar on both. I'm, I'm always on there, uh, especially Instagram. I just like, I don't like to talk much. I just like to post pictures. Very good. Well, those are all the questions I have for you, but I'm wondering, is there something I didn't ask that you'd like to get across in this interview? Dead Romans two is going to be rad. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's going to be cool. Uh, but help us b sell it all the hard covers before we get there um, and keep an eye on it. We've got a few other little projects that are going on. Uh, but there's one thing that I really want to call attention to because I absolutely love it. And it's a personal pro passion project that I'll always give love to is my Star Wars audio drama. Oh, yeah. 79. Um, I can think of very few things that I have... Uh, worked as hard on is that and it's like a 32 episode star wars audio drama with a cast of i think it's 106 people are in the story and i did like a full cinematic soundscape for it and audio is what i do for my day job so this is like a professional grade piece of production <laughs> so i i can't like i'll always not boast about it, but I'll always draw attention to it when I can, because it's something I'm incredibly proud of. And uh, yeah, and, and it's if you're a Star Wars fan, it's it's a Star Wars story that you've never heard before. And I don't want that to sound like hokey and cheesy, but it's just literally like I found an interesting little Star Wars angle of something that everybody is sort of aware of if you're a Star Wars fan, but no one's ever really explored it before. And where can and, people find and, it? Yeah. Just search for Mud 79, like Star Wars, Fearless Fred, Star Wars. Because I think the full title is called Fearless Fred Presents Mud 79, a fan-made Star Wars story. And we had to include the fan-made aspect because I'm very aware. It's not a real Star Wars thing. It is a fan fiction, like, audio drama with a whole bunch of fans that are just fans of Star Wars that wanted to do something. Because, like, what Nick was saying earlier about, like, being real about the situation. I'm being real about the situation in that when I started working on this during COVID, I wasn't sure if I was ever really going to get a chance to work on comics professionally again 
And so I did this so that it would be just a creative outlet to do. And I found all these other Star Wars fans that also wanted to do it. So we just wanted to tell a Star Wars story, man. That's cool. and, and I got to say, uh, coming from this objectively, uh, well, not that objectively because, you know, Fred's a friend of mine, but um, I was, uh, I had completely lost my enthusiasm for Star Wars. And then um, Fred put me on this and it regrew because of this. Um, and that's the truth. So, like, if you like Andor, yeah, I always exactly. say, if you, if you like Andor and that small yeah. scale storytelling of Andor, you're gonna like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good way to put it. It's like Platoon, but in Star Wars. Platoon Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Fred and Nick for the chat. You can discover more about Fred Kennedy on Instagram at fearless underscore Fred. You can discover more about Nick on Instagram at nick.marinkovic. Plus his website, that's at nickmarinkovic.com. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts. Remember to check out the truenorthcountrycomics.com website. True North Country Comics is on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel and hit the notification button. Remember you can follow along at True North Country Comics on most social media sites. Please send any and all feedback to John at truenorthcountrycomics.com. Thanks for listening, and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. Truth Country Comics Podcast is copyright True North Country Comics, copyright 2024.